Well, we just thought we were going live today on Facebook, but it looks like Facebook has decided to take away the option for us to go to live on our business page. So anyway, today Derek and I are back and I have Derek here to answer some questions. So Tuesday we talked about um, how to fix some credit things and common issues that show up on people's credit. But today I wanted to talk about building it because sometimes we have first time buyers that are younger or people that um, are new citizens, things like that, that mm -hmm. just don't have established credit. So let's start out with kids. I mean, what's something that parents could be doing for their kids to help establish credit for them? So just like everything, is, as parents, we know that our kids don't like to listen to us. <laughs> so we have to lead by example. So. Um, don't always say we don't have money for that or we can't afford that. Explain to them where your money's going, educate them along the way. So um, with, with my daughter, when she was 16, I got a, uh, added her as an authorized user on my account. She had a card with her name on it. I paid for everything, but I also kept that card with me. Um, she didn't just have access to it, but if we wanted her to go to the store and go get some milk or something for dinner, we'd give her the card, she'd come back with the receipt and I'd walk her through the steps of how to to be um, responsible for it. And that's where it starts. But adding them as an authorized user to that account gives them that full history um, and helps their credit. Now it's not gonna get them immediately boosted up, but it starts to give that, uh, that beginning, that base, that foundation for them in their credit. Um, but then as a parent, you have to realize that they get all the negative things too. So it adds a little bit of responsibility for you as after you add them that you know it's retroactive. It's the, the history of that account. So people ask me, hey, I've got kids that are seven, eight, nine years old. Should I add them now? And I'm like, unless you've got a crystal ball, no. Right. Because you never know what five years from now what your financial situation is. And if it's 10 years from the time that they turn 18 and they start to have their own credit profile, uh, you want to make sure that you're giving them the full leg up that your intention is. Well, and it's funny talking about that. I mean, I did the same thing for Austin. I added him onto an American Express card. I didn't have all of the conversation and everything else, so hindsight's always twenty twenty. But I thought this is a way that I can help build a credit history for him and get him a, a score so that he can do other things as he becomes an adult. And I had really forgot about it. And so he goes to buy a car uh, maybe six months ago and they're like, you have all of this debt and your debt is actually more expensive than the car. And it's more than you make in a year. But it was, it's an account that I use a lot when we're you know, fixing up houses or furnishing them for Airbnbs or things like that. So yeah, my debt was at the time more than the car that he was applying for. So we since got a hold of American Express and took him off as an authorized user so that he doesn't show that he has all of the debt. Yeah, and that's that's the other part too, is that it's not just the on-time payments, it's also that utilization ratio, and that's 30% of your score. So um, you just have to be very intent intentful when you make those decisions for your kids that you understand um, how credit works, so you're actually giving them that leg up. So when you're talking about credit utilization and that 30%, can you explain that to the people yeah, that are watching? Yeah, so it's really easy or easier to explain if we use a round number like $1,000. So you get a credit card with a $1,000 limit. If you use $500 um, in that month and you wait for your invoice to come and you pay it, then that $500 is 50% of the amount of credit offered to you. So you get 50% utilization of that rate, which is... Um, of the 30% 30, 30 of your total score, it's 165 points. So you'd only get half of those points because you only have, you used half of it. So the, the least amount that you use, the better your score. Per card. Per yeah. card, yeah. Okay. So it's not just, it, it is per card. It's not just like, okay, I have 10 cards and they're all at, you know, 2,000. So I got $20,000 limit. It's each one. They total, they total it all up. So that okay. $20,000, if you used 1,000, you're only using 5% okay. of your total um, utilization. So that's why when I instruct new clients, hey, I want you to have between five and seven credit cards and their eyes get huge and they start to freak out, it's the education really steps in. Just because you have seven credit cards doesn't mean you use seven credit cards every single month. So I've got all kinds of different strategies how to do that, but ultimately we were gonna manage one card at a time per month and pay it off. So how do people with no credit score go about getting 
a credit card? Yeah, so you have to start where you don't want to, where you're paying the money first. It's a secured credit card. Um, and a lot of times it takes about $200 to create that account. And with anything with your finances, you need to make sure that you're, you understand what the pre-qualifications are before you apply so you're not applying and you don't even qualify because it's going to hurt your score whether you qualify or not. So make sure you qualify and then make sure it's going to help you at all three credit bureaus. People always will ask, why is my credit score different on all three of these? Well, they all have different information. So if you open up a new account, make sure it's reporting to all three so that you're benefiting on all three fronts. Um, so you get that card, you pay the money in advance, you use it just like a regular credit card. And instead of it being a zero balance, the balance is now 200 or wherever that initial balance is. So you, you spend money, it drops, and then at the end of the month, you pay it back up to what your agreed upon um, entrance is for that account. So it's just using it for basic things that you're going to be purchasing anyway. So it's like, all right, I'm going to have to get gas in the car, use it just for the gas or whatever and pay it back, whatever you are going to spend on the gas from your debit card or something like yeah, that. Yeah, so like on seven if you seven cards, you're gonna have, everyone's gonna have a cell phone bill, electric bill, water bill, gas for your car, gas for your home. I mean, there's five of, the, five of the cards gone and if that's all you use them for every single month, you're gonna not create new bills because you already have those bills anyway. And then you just learn when to pay them so you're not paying interest on them. And now you're only managing two cards. Well, you can rotate those every other month and it's really not overwhelming at that point. Gotcha. So we're just wanting to give you a little snippet of what you can learn. We are having an event here at the office on Sunday, and it's also going to be something that we are going to be um, recording it, and we are going to hopefully be going Facebook Live if we can figure out how to do that again, since that wasn't an option today. Um, but Derek wants to offer um, a credit for yeah. people that want to participate with us. So for everybody that comes in, um, we're gonna offer, and I'm having these printed off on better paper, but we're gonna give you $200 off your initial setup fees um, with Scarlet Arrow. So um, just a little incentive for those that are coming. Um, so make sure you RSVP with Leslie so she's got the seats. I know that it's limited seating, so we wanna make sure that you have op um, that option and, and that save for you, but you are gonna try to jumpstart your credit journey with that $200 off. And whether it's jump starting or fixing, because sometimes, I mean, things happen. I can think of several stupid things that I did when I was younger that, you know, took a long time to get resolved um, that I shouldn't have done to begin with. But everybody has those things other than my freak husband, who's never been late on a single payment in his life. That's why I married him. Uh, <laughs> but the other thing that I wanted to point out because we had this question when we were live last week is they were asking if Derek could help with credit um, in a different state. They were actually in Washington and he can. So anywhere you guys are at and have a credit score or a lack of credit score, then definitely be in touch with Derek. My bond is for all 50 states. Technically the only state that we can't do credit repair in is Georgia. And that's because their state law says you have to be a realtor and working on your clients only, otherwise they don't allow credit repair. So that may change someday, but our bond's still covered. So if you're in Georgia, um, call me, we'll figure out a way to, <laughs> I know Leslie knows people in all, in all states. So we'll figure out a way to get you taken care of, whether it's through us or through another, another source. All right, guys, we look forward to seeing you Sunday. Have a great rest of the week. Talk to you later.